we're talking about? <laughs> Do we know Hi. what we're talking about? We have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I love it. Let's Hi, chat guys. about the weather. Yes, let's chat. Hi. Let's chat about divorce. But let's chat about, not so much about divorce because we've done that. Let's yeah. chat about why men have Our a tendency to be so surprised. surprised. Is it men? are most surprised yes. women are most surprised I think when the man is cheating but the woman no you know what I find so fascinating I I don't see a lot of men asking for divorce hmm. I really don't I see a lot of women, women asking for divorce and men acting very surprised and shocked right now that doesn't I mean I don't know what that's about I mean in some ways I, I think it's a real compliment to men they, they do kind of hang in there mm -hmm. you know and they they're kind of okay with the status quo, whereas women, the bar kind of keeps getting higher for us. We're really like, we want more. We want you to work, but we also want you to be emotionally available. We want you to be intimate and close and talk to us. Like we got, you know, our list keeps getting longer. Um, <laughs> really? I don't feel oh, that I was that way. I just feel no, but like- compared to 30 years ago. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Like everybody was in the game. Because years yeah, ago. I think from you know from my experience, you know, I will tell you that I feel like for women, and you know, we have talked about this before, that for women, like we, we, we talk about it and talk about it over and over about the problems and hey, this is bothering us. Hey, this is bothering us. And sometimes you just don't feel like your husband hears you. Well, I found an article on this which was so exciting for me because it was everything that I would have wanted to say and it really validated what I've seen and heard and lived and experienced. And the article is from divorcemoms.com and it's, I wish I remember the exact title, but it's basically like, you know, why do men kind of act so surprised or, you know, why do they not think we're gonna leave or, you know, that kind of thing. And basically what it said is, men compartmentalize, and I believe this, men's brains, we know men and women are different, men are from Mars, women for Venus, that kind of thing. So men compartmentalize, they have everything in a nice little box. So there's struggles in the marriage, they're like, well, you know what, the kids are little, you know, it's just, it's a hard time, you know, I'm working a lot while we're struggling financially, we'll be at a different place at another time. So they're able to compartmentalize it and just kind of put it in a box. We women, what you just said, we just chew on stuff. We're like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Mm -hmm. we can't let it go. We want to talk about it. We want to talk about it. We want to talk about it. Well, we're not getting along. We're fighting. Let's talk about this. And we're constantly processing information mm -hmm. until we're done. done. And here's the problem. If the man is compartmentalizing and he's saying, I'm not doing this with you. Like when the kids get a little older, it'll get better. When yeah. things get better financially, we'll be fine. I'm not going to process this with you anymore. We don't stop processing, just so you know. And then what we move into, and this article talks about it, is anticipatory grief. We start saying, you know, I'm never gonna get what I need. He's not hearing me. I wanna do this, I wanna do that. He's not hearing me, he's not supporting me. And so then we start grieving, grieving process, right? Shock, denial, anger, sadness, and then a, you know, a bargaining, and then we get to the end, which is acceptance. Yeah. Guys, if we reach the end, it's we're done. done. Yeah. And so then we want a divorce. So w what are the red flags for men? Because I feel like that, you know, I really want to help men really not to get to that point where they're sure. so surprised. I mean, you know, I know for me, I was, I was talking about going to a therapist and Hey, we need to go to a therapist. And when you, I feel like when you hear that kind of stuff coming from a wife, that needs to be a red flag. Danger, danger, yeah. danger. Yeah. So I think that anything these repetitive issues, I feel like it's like water on a rock and it just wears and wears and after five years, 10 years, there's not much left. Mm -hmm. So if you have these repetitive issues, issues where you just keep going round and round about sex, about money, about the kids, and you're not really finding, like, like to say every couple has issues, right? Yeah. Throughout the length of their marriage. But what I want to see in my marriage is, oh, that was an issue. We processed it. We talked about it. You know what? He gave a little here. I gave a little here. It's not an issue anymore. Oh, now here comes the next issue. How are we going to do this? And we work on it. We work on it. But if we're having the same issues over and over again, it is time to A, see a therapist. Mm -hmm. B, you can even read a book together that's for couples, like the Harville Hendricks Imago book, Getting the Love You Want, 
or making real love happen. Both of you read the book that will give you the skills and tools and then work on it together. The other thing is there are numerous couples weekends. It's in your church they have couples weekends. I've heard so many people talk about, you know, we were doing bad and then we went to this couples weekend. We did great for five years. Now we've hit this bump. Couples weekends are really powerful. Mine, of course, that I'm gonna recommend is Getting the Love You Want, mm -hmm. um, which is the Imago Couples Weekend. There's one through Rick Brown in Orlando. There's different teachers all over the country that do that weekend. It's powerful, but you've got to shock the system. You've got yeah. to do something that creates new tools and skills for the marriage. Because if you keep doing that same loop, eventually someone's going to go, yeah, because Hello. I mean, you know, I, I remember in my marriage, you know, things did get better and you, and you, then you, you, but you keep coming back to those same issues, same but, issues. but then, but we're really good women, <laughs> really good at once we mention the issue and once you say it's going to be fixed or we're going to work on this, that you really believe them and you kind of set that aside, mm -hmm. but then it keeps coming back up and keeps coming back up. Right? And as it comes back up, we have to process it and like, we can't let it go until it gets to resolution. And so mm -hmm. what ends up happening is at some point, if it's not changing mm -hmm. then we start grieving yeah and once somebody grieves and so this is a back to the where we started originally this is why men are shocked because we are at the end, end. of our grieving so we're like no I've accepted it um, mail me a check and I'll take the kids and, and they're like <laughs> what you know what I mean like no this is all we have to do is just tie right. this up in a little bow because right. I'm already at the end and they're at the beginning and I've seen this so many times where men come in and they are devastated mm -hmm. they're sobbing and they don't know what happened right. they don't know what happened and they you know and it may have been in all fairness to them some women don't say anything but they still are grieving no. because here's what we do guys and I'm 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 throwing it you know I'm being honest about what we women do mm. we talk to each other yeah I talk to you you talk to me I cry mm. to you we, we nurture each other through mm. it we process each other we go to therapy with usually a woman therapist and we talk to them and we talk to all our friends and we're like by the time you get you show up like we're done mm -hmm. we've already talked about it cried about it read nine books about it we've worked through all of it and we said something to you either all the time or three times but either way we did it we mm -hmm. did our process and then you are getting the memo and now you're trying to figure out what happened and starting that grief process. Is there a way as a woman to kind of break through that barrier with a man so that like to let them know mm -hmm. that, you know, this, I'm really starting to like fall out of love with you. Yeah. I think that, you I mean, know, you have to say that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think, you, I think you kind of do, but mm -hmm. I think one of the things is that, you know, when we look at the research on left brain and right brain and, you know, women tend to be more emotional or kind of live more sometimes, you know, there are left brain women for sure, but we tend to be more emotional and live in that where men tend to be a little more logical, not always, but we tend to see that. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're dealing with, let's what, just- What, me crying every five minutes? <laughs> That's emotional. <laughs> tend to be a little more. So what I would say is appeal to logic, right? Yeah. So, if, so let's just say it like this. If you're married to a logical man, and you are crying, 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 and he's like uh, blazed over, shut down. Yeah. Appeal to logic. Get him the book that explains the too little, too late. Print the article that talks about what we're talking about. Even silly as it sounds, make him watch this video to explain and then be able to say, that's what's happening for me. Mm -hmm. I am in anticipatory grief. I am grieving our marriage. And when I get to the end, I'm probably going to leave. And I don't want to do that. So will you join me in reviving our marriage, going to this weekend, reading this book, going to therapy? Can we save it? Because at some point I'm going to reach the end. And then when I do, there's no going back. And there is tons of literature on this. You could just Google this too little, too late. Women getting to the end in a relationship before a man. It's everywhere. It happens. It's what we do. Yeah. It's how we it's process. Not how we, it's not we can, like we can change ourselves. So, you know, we were talking about this on the air the other day with Roby, and he says, it's just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not fair because we, men can't right. change how we are, and it's true. But yeah. it's like women are from Venus, men are from Mars, yeah, right? And you no. just can't change. That's the way we each react in these kind of situations. Right. So that's why it, it is required that we do an intervention mm -hmm. on the situation. And, you know, I... We've got two different people here, and one person's going, I think it's going to be fine. It's going to work itself out. And the other person's like, it is not yes. going to work itself out. Mm -hmm. So it's hard, and that's why a third party or somebody who can give you some new tools on that is going to make a huge difference, you know? I mean, I think compartmentalization is 
a great skill for so many people and for the people that are in trenches with little babies and mm -hmm. they have a spouse who's like we'll get through this we're just you know that's wonderful but the bad side of it is ignoring yeah. the issue and ignoring the problem you know so if any of this is bringing up anything that's coming up in your life or um, if you know anyone who can use this video please 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 share it with them mm -hmm. and um, also you know don't be afraid to reach out to a therapist if this is something that's yeah. really or the couples that, weekend or a couple week couples, couples weekend, weekend and or... you know Shannon really suggests looking if you're looking for a therapist specifically dealing with couples these Imago therapists I I M A G O, and if you at magointernational.org, if you Google, there is an Imago therapist in every state. Um, they're all over the country. They're actually all over the world. They do couples weekends in other countries. And we've talked about this before, but the whole theory behind Imago right. is what that. So basically the concept is that we get wounded growing up, even though we might have great parents. This is not a parent bashing thing. Like I know as a mom, I tease all the time about prepaying like treatment and therapy mm -hmm. and college, because even though I tried my best, I still wounded my kids in ways. And, and even if I didn't wound them, the world wounds them, right? When you're not picked for the baseball team. So you get wounded, you feel rejected. Some of the wounds are rejection, abandonment, not good enough invisible um I'm trying to think uh, smothered which is like the mom who like we moms with our boys were like mm, so we just oh no sit with right. me you know so we smother and then these get happen we get wounded at developmental stages like attachment stage exploration stage so we get wounded throughout our life in these ways and then when we get 18 19 we're going out in the world we're trying to find our partner I mean, certainly happens younger than that but you're trying to find a life partner you think you're picking. You think you're choosing your partner. Oh, he's cute. I love blue eyes. Mm -hmm. That's my type. And you'll notice you can be attracted to someone physically. You spend five minutes with them. You're like, I don't know. I, I don't feel anything. I'm not feeling it. Yeah. That is because the imago, the the you know, in the likeness or image of your snapshot of what your parents and caregivers look like, their positive and negative traits. Mm -hmm. You're going to tend to be drawn to someone who has those positive and negative traits of your caregivers. That's why when you hear people say they married their mother or they married their yes. father, that is what they mean, that you are attracted to that person or that um, time in your life when you were wounded. And it's interesting, my grandmother um, was a very big part of my being raised because mm -hmm. when my parents divorced, my grandmother moved down. So when I do the Imago Weekend, I do my mother and my grandmother, and mm -hmm. then boom, whoever I'm dating, it's like, wow, you know, yeah. my husband is like, boom, 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 positive and negative traits on my grandmother and my mother. So then what happens is you choose this partner because they're comfortable and familiar, and then, and they are for the honeymoon stage, get a little shot of anesthesia, you're loving it, sex is great, everything's great, we're connected, and then at about a year to two years, the honeymoon stage phase that fades out, and now people are starting to show who they really are, mm -hmm. and that's when we come into the power struggle stage, which is, well, I need more attention, well, I need more space, you're smothering me, well, I need you to pay more attention, so we get into this power struggle, which is about re-wounding so now the person with the smother wound is feeling wounded because they're with a clingy person who's mm -hmm. like when are you coming home <laughs> right right and you're like never yes i'm a recovering <laughs> clinger i get it sorry to all of you that and i I'm did a recovering that to. runner <laughs> right so you know and then the runner bails right and they're see you later <laughs> exactly and so which is which is so funny no coincidence that we are Together. so close. Like we <laughs> fell in love instantly as right. friends and there's a draw there and that's right. it, clinger yeah. runner, right? And so then you have to learn to get conscious and be healthy mm -hmm. so that I can be friends with Suzanne but not suffocate her mm -hmm. and she can be friends with me and not make me feel abandoned, mm -hmm. right? And so the weekend and the book helps teach how do I not re-wound this person? But the bigger picture that I love of the philosophy is it's no coincidence that we're drawn to that right. because you need to run less. Yeah and I need to cling less. Mm -hmm. And so you will force me to grow, and I will force you to grow, and that's why we picked this partner, to heal and to grow those yeah. parts of ourselves. So as long as each person is willing to work on that is kind of the theory right. that they will help you heal and you will exactly. help them heal. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of why we're talking about this because if you are feeling like you're going down that path towards divorce and you wanna stop that, you really have to get into that core of 
these issues mm -hmm. and and really work on them before yeah. it gets to that I'm done. Well, because what I love about the Imago is it talks about like, we're not really fighting about who took out the garbage. No. You know what I mean? We're no. fighting about, you don't ever listen to me. You don't right. hear me. I'm invisible to you. Right. It's always a deeper issue. So it doesn't take long for them to teach you how to mm -hmm. identify that. And once we identify, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, this is where that's Got coming it. from. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It makes it so much easier. So this Imago, if see, these Imago therapists are spe specially trained in this type of therapy yes and so if you're really looking for someone in couples therapy you may want to go and check oh, out the imago i would never want to go to anybody else because and this isn't a slight on any other therapist i mean i think there's great therapists out there but i just think for me i can be very biased i'm just being honest i could be very biased if you come in you tell me about your boyfriend your husband and i'm like uh yeah all right, this guy's a piece of work, right? right? right. And because then, you're only hearing it from my side, right. and I'm perfect, right? Right, right. and I align with you. We're so right. similar, right. we both have kids, right. and, uh, and we do that as therapists, because I'm always blown away. I work under this theory that says it's always 50-50, and it's right. the relationship, and it's the dance, and I still have trouble when somebody comes in, and then they bring in their partner, and I'm like, Oh, oh, they're amazing too. Yes, <laughs> right. and I'm like, well, that's why he does that to you because right. you pushed you that button. You didn't tell me you did that. Right. I mean, it's so connected. It's so true. I just love that theory because it really balances. Yeah, that. and I think you know this whole talk. I didn't want it to make it sound like the men are shocked and the women have been like the perfect person the whole no. time and they're like you didn't listen to me and so mm -hmm. now it's over you know there's always those issues with both sides always both it's sides and always. you know on the back side of my divorce is when you know you see okay yeah. i needed to own my 50 percent too yeah you know? no it, it, that's why i love the imago it says it's 50 50. Yeah. i do this that triggers my partner mm -hmm. and then they do this that triggers me and then i wound them and then they wound me mm -hmm. and then we're in a power struggle and here we are and if i can work on reclaiming these parts of myself and taking better care of myself like clinging is about like fill me up because I'm insecure right. and I need to know you're not going to leave me instead of me not doing that and saying, you know what, go do whatever you need to do this and I will find a way to feel okay in my own skin and not feel so scared. And when I do that, I'm going to grow. And then when I do that, you're going to lean in because yeah. you're not going to feel so smothered. You know, it's so funny. I just posted something on Instagram about this, about how um, the, the, the biggest gift you can give someone, uh, someone that you're in a relationship with, is your own personal development. Mm. Um, and that is so true because yeah. when you're taking care of yourself, when you are building yourself up mm -hmm. and creating the self-love, you don't need to have the other person fill you up. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, you know, that is so profound. It's hard to do. <laughs> it's really effing hard to do. But when you really start to work on yourself, you'll see that all your relationships are better. Well, people come in and they say, my husband, my husband, my husband, my husband. I go, whoa. Right. That's great. Okay, got a foundation. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you. Because mm -hmm. what I will say to them is he's not here. Mm -hmm. If you change, the relationship will change. Mm -hmm. It's like a mobile, you hang it, you pull one part of it, the whole thing wobbles. If you change, now I'm not saying it'll change for the better. No. It might make you mad. Right. But if you change, the dance will, will change. change. Yeah. And a lot of times when you work on your stuff, it mm -hmm. changes for the positive. Yeah. So I love that. 100%. Awesome. All right. Well, we hope this gave you some insight Yay. into... Divorce, relationships, <laughs> how not the to Imago get theory, how not to get divorced. Yeah. Um, and don't forget to check out um, those those Imago therapists if you are looking for someone mm -hmm. specifically for couples. Um, don't forget to like our page. Please. And the biggest compliment you can give us is to share yeah. our videos with yes. your friends. Please. All right. Thank you all for watching What Your Friends Won't Tell You. If you have any show topics, Leave us a comment. We're running out of ideas. <laughs> no, right. we're not. We have lots of ideas. We're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about that orchid next week. <laughs> Tune in for swimming pool guidance. That's right. <laughs> Always enough. use DEET in your mosquito spray, right? Or your mosquito repellent. <laughs> this is all stuff you need. Yeah. <laughs> all right, bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>